think I sent that to the wall. Uh, so the time has come. I've got uh, some engines that I've got to start assembling. Um, I'm going to do my buddy Calvin's engine for uh, Squareback that he actually bought from me. Um, he bought a motor uh, and then didn't listen to me, to, to me or his father. Um, never checked uh, oil pressure, didn't really set the end play, put everything in without a rear main seal, uh, and totally ropes the engine. Um, so I had to find him a new case. Uh, we got a whole new bottom end. Luckily, his jugs and his heads are actually in really, really good shape, so we're going to reuse those. Uh, but I'm going to start putting the bottom end together, and I'm going to show you how to do it. So uh, we're going to, we're going to, that's, that's, we're, yeah, that, now, go. All right, so this is the Type 3 case um, that I had cut for Calvin. Um, it's been cut uh, 40 over, um, as you can see here. Um, so I've got these saddles nice and clean. I've got the dowel pins in. Um, I'm gonna take all my bearings and put them in here um, and get them in position and just mark them where the position is so that when the ones that go on the crankshaft are on the crankshaft, it'll be a little bit easier for me to locate them um, when it gets time to uh, put all those together. So make sure you're always like triple clean your surfaces before you put everything together. Um, and then uh, we can start assembling the bearings. I'm gonna double check this one. Uh, this one's got a little bit of a weird uh, cut on the bottom and I can re never remember which way it's supposed to face. I'm pretty sure it's towards the back like that. Um, judging from the position of the pin, because it's a little bit offset, it's biased towards the back here, as it is on this. Um, and I know this goes face down, so that guy's gonna go in just like that. Nice snug fit, okay. Get straight. There we go, okay. And then you've got your shells, thusly, these we won't have to mark because these always go uh, on either side of the case. So these don't actually go on uh, the crank, whereas these that are one piece have to be put on the crank first before the crank goes into the case. So these I'm gonna leave out for right now. And then we've got number two. This one's also biased towards the back. snug you'll hear it pop into place there we go and we'll get the thrust bearing and that'll also go just like that All right, okay so I'm gonna get a marker and we're gonna just make a mark on these so that they're level on the case on each one and then I'm gonna mark uh, the closest point to where the pins are on the back of the bearing, just to show that it's there in the middle, and I'm gonna mark the case as well. I'll probably just put a line all the way down the bearing and everything so that it lines up, just to give as many different points to, uh, to line it up on when it goes in. And then uh, we might actually have to modify these channels um, as well. So let's make these lines first, and then uh, I'll show you what we gotta do to to check these oiled passages. Just like this, off the bearing, to make a line. get the camera in here and show you after exactly what I'm doing so you can see all right so you can see I've got ow you can see I've got my paint marks there to line up with on all the bearings I think I did the front and this guy just so that you know, I have some references when these are on the crank um, so now, 
I've got to take these bearings out and we're going to mark these uh, oil passages here on the back to make sure they actually line up with the oil passages in the case because sometimes they do not. That's something that I learned uh, from actually VW Jawbreaker, who I'm going to link up here in the corner. Um, and uh, it actually really makes sense. And hopefully if this has some overlap, um, I'll show you what I am talking about. All right, so I, I tried doing this with a paint pen and wasn't having good luck. So I took some spray paint and just sprayed directly on the case and then pressed my bearing in. And you can see that little dip right there in the middle. Right there, that little dip is just the tiniest bit of overlap of that channel on the oil port right there. So now that I have that mark, it's not a lot, it's not as bad as I've seen, um, but I am gonna, I'm gonna do all the bearings and uh, I will actually take a rotary tool with a diamond head bit and just take that little, that little tiny bit out to give it a little bit more flow and then make sure that it's good. So I'm gonna do the other two bearings now and then uh, we'll have a crack at um, uh, kind of shelling that out a little bit to get some more flow. All right, so I have, get a pointer here. I've gotten all these painted up. Like I said, I didn't, well, I should probably do these two. So I will do these in a second, but this will at least show you what I'm talking about. So you can see this little dip here. It's a little bit of overlap. We're gonna open that up with a, with a Dremel. This guy's actually okay. That lines up pretty good. So this one we don't have to touch. This one doesn't have a channel, and I think, I'm not really sure why it doesn't have a channel, but it does have this tiny little hole here, and you can see that there's a tiny bit of area that's missing. So I'm waiting to hear from someone uh, from uh, uh, Jawbreaker whether or not it's worth opening that guy up, or if maybe it'll kind of screw up the surface on the inside if I try to do that. So we're going to hold off on that for a second. At least this guy I can, uh, I can start hogging out. I'm going to do the bearing shells on both the other ones, and then... Uh, and then uh, hog those out as well. Uh, Gary says no, that, well, well, I can't read it, but I think he said no, don't worry about this guy. So that one I don't think I'm gonna have to touch. I'm just gonna do this guy, I'm gonna paint those two in a second, and then we can start uh, opening that up. All right, so I got a flywheel set up here uh, just to use kind of as a stand. Is this like actually sealed or brand spanking new? It is covered in schmoo though, so we are gonna give it a quick clean with some some acetone. Some of this. Yeah. That's why you clean the stuff. Just because it's new doesn't mean it's clean. So we might actually be doing this a couple more times until um, the rag is uh, at a sufficient level of not brown. So let me, uh, let me finish this up here and we'll continue on in just a moment. rods and all of that stuff on uh, just to make it a little easier to move around. Uh, we're going to do the timing set first, um, but there's kind of an order of how things go on. So the first thing that's going to go on the crankshaft is uh, one of your main bearings. Now this is the one uh, that goes in the number two position and um, is one of the, the, it's the one it's the one piece that doesn't have the shoulder on it, it doesn't have the thrust, so um, this one is really important to have oriented uh, with marking and, and whatnot so that it goes on the right way, otherwise you'll have to pull everything apart afterwards. So I'm going to mark this again before I put it on here, but um, I just wanted to show you this first. So that's going to go on first. After that, it goes on a large keyway. Um, into the crankshaft that is going to keep your uh, crank timing gear and your brass distributor gear in place um, once those are on. So that's going to go on first and then your timing gear goes on after that. 
there's a spacer that goes between the timing gear and your brass distributor gear. And then, and then, your little guy goes on at the top of that. And afterwards, there's, uh, oh wait, oh, I'm sorry, back up. There's a snap ring that goes on and keeps all that in place. And then, the little guy goes on at the top. And then there's a little keyway that goes on the very end of the crankshaft for your crank pulley. So, before we do all this, I'm going to paint this again to make sure I get my orientation right, grease it up, and put it on there, and then uh, we can start um, getting these on as well. Uh, this does face a certain way because it has, I'll clean this up a little bit better, but you can see those dimples there, those are your timing marks, and those are going to face... Uh, towards the, the crank pulley, not the flywheel. Um, so these are going to face out. I guess those are uh, what you're going to line up on the cam gear when that goes in as well. So I'll clean these uh, clean these up, paint this guy, get that on and greased, and then we can start getting uh, all these gears in place. So I put uh, a little arrow. It's going to remind me that it's going to go on thusly to face the, uh, face the flywheel. So I'm going to grease up this area here with some uh, engine assembly lube and then uh, slap this guy on like that and we can start doing the timing for the lot stuff so, It is supposed to be a pretty snug fit, so once I kind of get it close here, I'm going to uh, do a little tippy-tappy. Okay. Uh, Alright, so for the next bit, so that's going to go on just like that. We're going to utilize uh, flames here. What we want to happen is for this guy to expand enough to just fall onto the crank. It'll be a lot easier with the brass. It'll be a lot easier if I had a camp stove. Uh, but I don't. So we're going to do it this way. Remember that you need your timing marks face up. Here we go. Nice. Okay. So the space you can go on now. And now uh, I'm going to clean the uh, distributor gear up first before we uh, before we slap that one on. Now this, you want to be really careful not to squeeze too tightly. So, now we've got a snap ring. So you can see there's this groove right here. The snap ring's going to go in. This guy. Okay. I'm going to squeeze that open. from that. Now that's on. Cool. So that's uh, your timing assembly. Uh, now I'm going to clean this up again, get the rest of the paint off of this, and then uh, we can place this on. I've got to put in another arrow on this as I did with this one so that I know which way it's got to go. Get a couple more witness marks on and then we can get that on. Then we can start doing the rods down the bottom. Okay, so top of the... Uh, Distri uh, distributor. The crankshaft is uh, all nice and assembled, so now we can do the rods. Uh, I've got brand spanking new ones here, but there's some things we got to check and some things we have to be mindful of um, when we're assembling. So this is a 1600 crankshaft uh, out of the Super Beetle um, that I also have to build a motor for. 
and you can see you can see these you can see these raised stampings here on all the rods right so that as I recall uh, they all they all have to be facing a certain way when the crank when the crankshaft is in a certain position uh, because the rods are offset and putting them in uh, any other position can actually cause the pistons uh, to wear prematurely. So I've got my manual and it's told me here which position they have to be in, uh, you know, in accordance to the position of the crankshaft and I have that set up exactly the same thing with that. So I'm going to be using that as my model as I build it. Uh, something else um, this uh, the manual was reminding me of is to check that all of my wrist pins fit in the rods uh, before I install them. Um, so I'm, uh, I'm going to clean the rods up and then uh, I'll clean the wrist pins as well and uh, make sure that they all fit in all the rods so that I don't have to worry about anything and then uh, and I'll clean up the rods and we can start uh, throwing them on the crankshaft. So let me get through that whole process and then we'll start uh, slapping them on there. All right, I forgot, I forgot a thing. So after you get your bearing on, you gotta put your slinger in. And then, and then you can put this in. And then this whole thing, this will all be, that'll all be done. So I'm gonna put that Woodruff key back in there uh, I just checked all my pistons and made sure that the wrist pins fit in the rods. So now I can clean these up, take those apart, get the bearings in them, and we can start assembling uh, the rest of the crankshaft. Okay, so I've got my rods disassembled and cleaned up. I've got my rod bearings all cleaned up and ready to go. Uh, these, they come torqued. Uh, so you've got to break the nuts and separate the heads on these so that you can uh, reassemble them. You'll notice that there are numbers on the sides of each one of these. When you reassemble them, you want the numbers on the same side and you want those numbers to match. Um, that's really important as well as the, the casting mark to show the offset. Um, I feel like there was something else that I wanted to tell you and I can't remember what it is. Oh. Um, the Bentley manuals will say to torque these nuts to 22 to 25 foot-pounds. Um, these are AA aftermarket rods, uh, and their website says to torque these to 30 pounds. It's their rods, it's their crank, so I'm going to use the, the 30 pound spec, but I'm going to creep up on it. Um, so I'll go to 15, make sure that it rotates nicely, and then go to 30 and make sure that it rotates nicely, and then go on to the next one then retorque them again in the morning to 30 pounds and make sure that everybody's good. Uh, so we're going to start with number one here. You'll notice, oh, that was the other thing. Um, when you're taking these apart, uh, they, are, they are pretty tight because they've got knurls. They've got knurls up here um, that help keep it uh, actually in the head. So you want to avoid hitting this with a hammer. I was able to just kind of push it out with my thumb and, and you know, bounce back and forth here. Um, if you do have to hit it with a hammer, uh, you want to use like a brass drift um, and a small hammer and just do be very gentle with it so that you don't um, uh, peen this over and spread it out. So you'll notice in here there are these tangs for the bearing shells. They have a little foot on them as well. So those are going to go, let's see if I can do this with one hand. Those are going to go thusly, and they go they go into the rod dry. Oh, come on, get it on camera now. They go into the rod dry. The back side does not have to be lubricated, but this side that goes on the crank does. So make sure that's nice and flush and tight and in its place. Okay, that's good. Do the rod side now. Double check this and make sure that it's in its place. All right, so uh, so this first one, 
because this is number one. You can tell that I've got it in the same position here. It's face out this way, face out this way. This has to be on this side, face out to me. So when I put this together, I've got to go this way. And I want to make sure that my numbers are on the same side. So let me uh, grease this up and then we can put it in. I'm going to just kind of snug it down with uh, a regular ratchet and then we'll use, uh, use the torque wrench. That's not good. So why is it doing that? All right, I'm gonna do my best to show you what I found here, but it would appear that I've got a bogus set of rod bearings. So the, I was trying to use uh, silver line rod bearings, um, and I just, just the way there, I was getting like really, I wonder if I'll be able to see it here, but you can see, oh, come on, focus. You can see just barely, little tiny bit of a wear right there and I've got similar things on on both sides of it, on the rod and the cap so I started looking I just started putting shells in all of them and you can kind of see right down here is that gap right so I checked because I've got another engine to do and that kit came with molly bearings so I put those in, no gap. So I'm gonna try to put a rod on with the molly bearings and see how that goes. Um, and I've got a sneaking suspicion I'm gonna end up getting a, a set of, that, of, uh, of those standard mollies because these are fitting in the rods way better than the silver lines were. So let's, let's try a set of these and see what happens. Okay, out. Yeah, this already feels significantly better. Numbers in. Okay. The nuts. The fact that the rod's moving while I'm trying to tighten this down is good because it wasn't doing that before. Okay. That feels much better. That's much smoother. Go up to final torque. Yeah. Okay. Rod barons are trash. Right, guys that's going to do it for this one we've got the crankshaft all assembled and ready to go in uh, next time i'm going to show you how to uh, cut those bearings out and put the rest of the short block together uh, so thanks for watching subscribe if you haven't already leave a like leave a comment share with your friends and uh, we'll see you for the rest of this
horrific adventure. Thank you.